The Palace of Christ's Assembly Platform on Transparency and Accountability for Christians in Government has called for honesty and integrity aiming Christians in government to fight against corruption in Nigeria. General Overseer said the program is Shun Corruption Project is a project initiated by priests and justice. The male focus of the project is to mobilize Christians especially Pentecostal Christians to join the fight against corruption. He said in the past Christian do not engage and fight against corruption and this is the time for Christians to start up and fight against corruption in our community. He said the program today is specifically male for Christians in government and to engage all Christians in government. And if Christian in government can show honestly and integrity it will do a long well towards the fight against corruption in Nigeria. Our focus is to bring together Pentecostal Christians who are in, working in different government agencies, you know, under the, to bring them under the umbrella of the Sean Corruption Project. Some of them are beneficiaries who have been engaging with us since the inception of the project in 2018. And you will hear that some of them will be sharing their uh, testimonies of change, uh, what they have used, the, the information and the awareness we have created over time. What, how are they currently using it in their different offices? You know, how have they been able to, to, to incorporate transparency and accountability in the work that they are doing in, in, in their various organizations? So the focus for this program is uh, Christians in government. We want to encourage transparency, encourage uh, accountability, and encourage participation. I want to ensure that as they are in different offices, they continue to maintain integrity, because this is what the project stands for. They continue to maintain and promote integrity in their various uh, organizations. Yes, the, the, the church is... Uh, it plays a critical role, all right, in the fabric of society. The church, especially in Nigeria and Africa, has large followership, especially the Pentecostal space. Now, what we are doing, you know, part of our programming is to, you know, uh, train pastors, train Pentecostal pastors to mainstream anti-corruption messages in their sermon, all right? By so doing, their adherents are listening. Many of them listen, many Nigerians listen to their pastors. So by mainstreaming anti-corruption messages in their sermons, we envision a time will come when these messages will penetrate the hearts of these adherents. These adherents are people who work in different government organizations. So these messages will penetrate their hearts and they will begin to do the right thing. And that's the approach that we are using. Sorry, Africa Anti-Corruption Day. Right? So we have successfully institutionalized the Sunday before that July 11 as Anti-Corruption Sunday. So during the Anti-Corruption Sunday, Pentecostals, especially those who have been engaging with us, they use that day to preach anti-corruption sermons. All right? So they preach anti-corruption sermons. They already have booked it down as an anti-corruption uh, Sunday. So that's what one of the things that we have successfully uh, institutionalized under the Sean Corruption Project. We are collaborating with the Christian Center for Missions, Family and Leadership Development, SEMFLEG, uh, chaired by the uh, uh, chairman of the uh, uh, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria City Chapter, Reverend Isaac Komalafe. You know, we are collaborating with that organization to begin to step down this training since this organization is primarily focusing on also the family. So these trainings have been stepped down in his own programs. You know, for instance, yesterday we had the Valentine uh, family program with him, where we addressed young people, you know, especially on how to uh, maintain Christian values and uh, ethics, you know, even in their personal lives. So we, 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 we collaborate with these organizations. We collaborate with Mountains of Hope Foundation, uh, which is also a faith-based organization that has its own, another focus on family values and ethics. All right? So this is how we are able to reach uh, uh, families. And also note that the beneficiaries who attend our programs are also parents. All right? So if you look at the, the, the core of people we have trained, many of them step down these messages. You know? And we have also established several anti-corruption clubs 
all right, in different schools across the 26 states of Nigeria in collaboration with the Student Christian Movement of Nigeria. All right, so through those media, we are able to step down these trainings to different small groups and small units you know, where you have youths and also children. Dr. Tive Ibuzo, I'm the General Overseer of Palace of Peace Assembly and the Project Director of the Sean Corruption Project. Uh, this program, Sean Corruption Project, is um, a project initiated by Priest Peace and Justice Initiative, PPJ, which is the social arm of the Palace of Priest Assembly. The Sean Corruption Project is supported by John T. and Catherine Makato Foundation. And the main focus of the project is to mobilize Christians, especially Pentecostal Christians, to join the fight against corruption. In the past, Christians do not engage in the fight against corruption. And so about six years ago, we started this project. Have established social arm of the church to specifically fight against corruption and engage other social issues. This program today is specifically meant for Christians in government because we know that the Bible is very clear about Christian ethic and conduct. Conduct for holiness, transparency, honesty, and integrity. So this to engage Christians in government because we know that government occupies a special place in our lives. And if Christians in government can show honesty and integrity, it will do a long way towards the fight against corruption in Nigeria. Sir, Who are engaging with Muslims? There are Muslim organizations engaging with Muslims. There are Catholic organizations engaging with Catholics. We are a Pentecostal organization. We are engaging with Pentecostals. The Catholic Foundation has been in Nigeria for over 30 years, working with um, Nigerians and supporting their efforts to ensure that um, there's accountability, that there are services and resources go to the, the very poor that need it the most. And through all of our work in these 30 years, we always ask ourselves the question, what more can we do? How else can we learn? Are there other things that we should pay attention to that would help us drive the change that Nigerians seek? And, and we learned that it's important to pay attention to what is called behavior change. That is, what is it that makes someone act in a certain way or encourages them to do something or not do another? And we know that in this country, you all know, there's a lot of religiosity. We're very religious. We're on our way to the mosque, we're on our way to the church. We call God's name. And we thought that shouldn't be taken with levity. There's something in there because there's certain people who understand the location of religion. Religion not as something you practice but as faith, a belief in something bigger than yourself. And we thought if we found some religious leaders that are really speaking truth to power, who are honest, who are respected, and we support them to include the message of accountability into their sermons, we can reach more people uh, in more ways that they understand that would not feel threatening to them in places where they would ordinarily go, so it's not extra work. And so that led us to our work um, around working with faith-based leaders, you know, the Muslim faith, the Christian faith. And today we are at the Palace of Priest Assemblies, um, Priest um, Peace and Justice Initiative, and they're talking with public servants. And we think that's a very powerful way to pass across the message because we, we say a lot of things about our public service, sometimes not very, um, um, should I say, commendable or, or, or palatable of the public service, and we assume that everyone is bad in there. It's important to salute those who are doing the right things, even as difficult as it is, and to reassure them that they might be few, but they matter, and the change they drive can make this country better. It's also important to bring people together so that they can find like minds. It's also important to have a space for you to talk about your challenges and, and the opportunities you see and the strategies that you think that if you're supported in that way, you can even be more accountable. 